Amerikaanse staat Tennessee moet de drag queens opkomen voor hun rechten. Er is een nieuwe wet goedgekeurd die drag shows verbiedt. Een bedenkelijke primeur in de Verenigde Staten. Maak kennis met de drag queens en hun tegenstanders in Drag Queen Wars. Dressed up as a lady, I'm rubbing his crotch in front of a prepubescent child. I have a real problem with that. Why are you coming to a kids' event? Why are you hosting drag queen kids? In het diepe zuiden van Amerika heerst er diepe verdeeldheid. Er woedt een strijd tussen conservatieve christenen en drag queens. We want to just live, thrive, and exist like. Every other normal individual. Een cultuuroorlog over de rechten van queers en over de vraag of kinderen drag queens in het openbaar mogen zien. They are sexual in nature and children should not be there. De drag queens vechten voor hun rechten. Zeker 15 Amerikaanse staten hebben wetsvoorstellen ingediend om drag te verbieden. Please don't vote for somebody that would be against me doing what I do. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. Tennessee. De thuis van Dolly Parton en country muziek. En nu ook de eerste staat die een verbod op drag invoert. Volgens de wet is het strafbaar als drag queens nog langer in het openbaar of in het bijzijn van kinderen optreden. Het verbod past in een trend. Dit jaar alleen al zijn er meer dan 400 anti-LGBTQ plus wetten ingevoerd in Amerika. Een recordaantal en een dieptepunt voor de queergemeenschap. Zij zien hun rechten al maar meer ingeperkt. We trekken door het diepe zuiden om uit te zoeken waarom drag het brandpunt vormt van de cultuuroorlog in Amerika. Onze eerste halt is Charlotte in North Carolina. Karen Affection maakt zich op voor een drag event dat hier binnenkort misschien verboden zal zijn. Voor haar eigen veiligheid werd ze onder begeleiding het gebouw binnengeleid. You put security on the door today. I mean, yes. they kind of usher you in. Um, so security for any entertainer who does this, there's an escort to bring us from a car inside. Sometimes uh, they will bring us up to the door and park our cars for us away, so people don't know what we're driving. Dit is geen gewone drag show. Dit is een voorleesuurtje. Hello, how are you? Good. Good? We're going to get started with just try one bite. And this is a story about children making their parents try one bite. Oh, I know. See? Something like this is what we didn't get when I was a young child, figuring out that I was different. This is what I needed when I was that six-year-old little boy who knew I was different but didn't know why. Eating for lunch a whole jar of mayonnaise. Ew. Dit soort evenementen voor kinderen heeft het anti-drag sentiment in Amerika aangewakkerd. Drag queens worden nu zo geviseerd dat tegenstanders vaak zelfs gewapend opdagen. De anti-drag wetten wegen zwaar op Karen. Having our passion taken away from us is without anyone attempting to even listen to the human beings behind. This vitriol that they have is, I don't even want to say offensive, it, it's, it's dehumanizing. Everybody look at your parents and say, we want ice cream. Buiten houdt het beveiligingsteam de wacht. Hallo. Normaal staan ze bij abortusklinieken om mensen daar te beschermen. Hier hebben ze de drag queen naar binnen begeleid en waken ze nu over de veiligheid van de deelnemers. We're here to make sure that these people feel safe, um, that they feel surrounded in safety, and that you know the ne'er do wells aren't going to be able to get to them, not through us. Tony stond vroeger verrassend genoeg aan de andere kant. I would have been out there with them in my early twenties. I, I, it's 
I was so stern in my belief and thankfully, you know, I matured and had an evolution in my mid to late 20s. It was like, what am I doing? Yeah, that's really high. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There's a huge mischaracterization of what goes on here. They act like it's a sex show in here. <laughs> it's little kids being read to by someone in costume. Hier kan het voorleesuurtje doorgaan, maar elders loopt de spanning hoog op. We were on our way to Louisville in Kentucky. We're supposed to go to Drag Story Hour, but the organizers have had to call the whole thing off. They've had death threats, they've had hate mail, and understandably, they just feel it's not safe to continue. So it kind of feels like everything's taken a very sinister turn. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. Why are you coming to a kids event? Why are you hosting Drag Queen Kids? Dit is de protestactie die het team van Kentucky deed besluiten om hun volgend event af te gelasten. Naast de gebruikelijke demonstranten was er ook een bomalarm, net voor de drag queen zou beginnen. Jamie was een van de organisatoren. We didn't want to create mass panic and say there's a bomb, um, so we just said there was a safety concern and asked them to evacuate. Um, as people were moving out, cops were showing up, and it kind of like you can't really hide the bomb squad showing up bunch of families just like right along that wall right there were just crying. The threat said that they had eyes on the property and if we didn't do what they were telling us to do that they would detonate the bomb. Um, so yeah, it was very nerve-wracking. Het bomalarm bleek vals en de show kon nadien toch nog doorgaan. In Tennessee komen er geen voorleesuurtjes meer. Die zijn binnenkort strafbaar. Volgens de voorstanders hebben veel wetgevers nog nooit een dragshow of voorleesuurtje bijgewoond en hebben ze geen oog voor de positieve kanten. Hallo, Tim. Yes, ma'am. Great to meet you. How's it going? Tell me your name. Minnie, lovely Minnie, to meet Tim you. Burchett. Oh, a fistbam. Yes. Tim Burchett is een conservatieve republikein. Hij neemt zich naar eigen zeggen niet al te serieus. Hij is voor het verbod op dragoptredens. You know, when I see a, a grown man dressed up as a lady um, rubbing his crotch in front of a prepubescent child, I have a real problem with that. But there is a difference, isn't there, between adult drag performers and drag story hours, you know, drag queens going into libraries. I, I, in the room. I don't care what adults do as long as it doesn't hurt me or raise my taxes. Um, and if they want to do that within the, the confines of their home, that's, that's quite all right. Just don't do it in front of my family. In deze cultuuroorlog snappen sommigen niet waarom veel conservatieve republikeinen zoals Tim zo graag wetten willen tegen drag queens, maar niet doen tegen de grootste kindermoordenaar in Amerika, wapens. Oké, okay, let me ask you this: How many people have died at drag story hours in the U.S.? I have no idea, man. I don't. While we wait till somebody, uh, that's not the issue of people dying. At drag, at drag shows. Well, exactly. Although we did have a transgender person murder six people in Nashville this past weekend. We've had all kinds of people murdering people in the U.S., as you know and I know, but there have been no people that have died at drag shows, at drag story hours specifically. How many people have been killed at school shootings this have, year alone? I have no idea, ma'am. Well, I can tell you this year alone, it's 74 killed or injured at a school we shooting. Lost, we lost 100 people yesterday in automobile accidents. But isn't that, Nobody's big, and, you know, isn't that the bigger issue, though, here? Aren't guns the bigger evil here than just, you know, the old drag story hour? Well, the same rock that Cain used to kill Abel is the same rock that, um, you know, David slew Goliath with. So I don't think the rock is the problem. I think it's we have a sick, sick country, and we need a revival. We need a true religious awakening. Dit is een waken voor de zes vermoorde mensen waarover Tim het had. En hij kon niet Sinds ons gesprek is het aantal mensen dat gedood of gewond raakte bij schietpartijen op scholen gestegen tot meer dan honderd. De dragwet van Tennessee is vaag geformuleerd, maar wil in de eerste plaats dragoptredens verbieden in het bijzijn van kinderen. 
Deze drag brunch is dus niet strafbaar, want er geldt een leeftijdsgrens en hij vindt plaats op een privédomein. Maar als een kind door het raam kijkt, is er misschien wel een probleem. People from all across the state come to this. It's a lot of fun. I love the performances, the costumes, the makeup, the hair. I love all of it. Veronica Electronica is een top drag queen en activiste. Ze maakt zich op voor de show. So Veronica, can I, can I ask how long the routine usually takes? I like to have at least two hours. Volgens Veronica viseert de anti-dragwet niet alleen drag queens. It's not about drag. It's about LGBTQ identities and it's about LGBTQ advancing equality and LGBT people seem to be that hot button right now. A couple of years ago it was immigrants, right? They have used the LGBT um, minority in this country and made a huge issue about it under the guise of protecting the children. Dolly, you're fantastic. Dit gaat duidelijk niet alleen om drag. Veronica vecht voor het behoud van haar recht en dat van haar vrienden om te doen wat ze graag doen, maar ook om vrij te kunnen leven. I speak with and I challenge my, my fans and, my, and, and the people that come to my shows. I say, I'll take your tip, I'll take your applause and I'll take your admiration in the, in the photos with you, but when you go to vote, please don't vote for somebody that would be against me doing what I do. Op 1 april werd de anti-dragwet geblokkeerd, net voor die van kracht zou gaan. Een theatergroep uit Memphis had een klacht neergelegd tegen de staat Tennessee, omdat de nieuwe wet in strijd zou zijn met het eerste amendement van de grondwet, dat vrijheid van meningsuiting en expressie beschermt. Begin juni besliste een federale rechter dan dat de wet inderdaad ongrondwettelijk is. Een overwinning voor de voorvechters van lgbtq rechten Ook al geldt de uitspraak enkel in Shelby County, waar de rechtszaak werd aangespannen. Hi Robin. En wie is Piper. Hi Piper. Voor de andere kant gaat het ook niet alleen om drag. Ze vinden dat drag queens in het hele land kinderen overseksualiseren. Volgens sommige ouders worden hun kinderen overal blootgesteld aan schadelijke inhoud. Kinks, fantasies en porn. This looks very rude. <laughs> the vulva and friends. Don't forget this paragraph about the anus. It's also chock full of sensitive nerves, making it a primo erogenous zone for touching and penetrating. All before lunchtime. All before lunch, that's this right. Just... Robin Steenman is lid van Moms for Liberty, een landelijke groepering die meer controle wil over wat hun kinderen onderwezen krijgen. Het boek dat ze laat zien, Let's Talk About It, is in enkele bibliotheken in de VS te vinden. Ze is bang dat het in scholen zou terechtkomen en dat het onderwijs kinderen indoctrineert en ze gender onzeker maakt. But sex education today has really been hijacked in our country to the point of, I mean, it pushes uh, not just LGBTQ narratives, but it encourages experimentation, it encourages multiple oh, partners. Mommy. And when you say it pushes this LGBT narrative, what, what, what do you mean by that? What, what is that narrative? That all the sex education has um, large sections of them de dedicated towards LGBTQ and pushing it as a, a positive and, and thing that kids should try. And you don't think that obviously there are some some people who in that classroom who who might be gay. They might be, but kids are also impressionable. I wonder what you think about drag performances being banned in Tennessee, in public, in front of kids. What, what's your take on it? My take on all of it in general is it's the sexualization of children, which we're against. What is the worry with, with the drag story hour stuff? Because some people say, you know, there's nothing sexy or provocative about, about reading a book in a kid's library. They're not particularly there, sexualized. No but your, what's your that, thought? That we're pushing gender ideology on children as young as kindergarten, as the youngest preschool. And drag story, I was a part of that. I'm optimistic that we can make change and we can save the country, that we can save the kids. Maar niet alleen conservatieve moeders laten van zich horen. Ook binnen de gay gemeenschap is niet iedereen gelukkig. I did get permission to go up on the street and do street interviews and ask people what they think about like kids at drag shows. Cool. So. Hi, Mickey. How's it going? Good. How are you? Nice. 
Mickey Cutler is lid van Gays Against Groomers. Ze zijn naar eigen zeggen een groepering van gays tegen de seksualisering, indoctrinatie en medicalisering van kinderen onder het mom van LGBTQIA+. Ze is met een vriendin aan het praten over komende events. Mickey vindt dat kinderen niet op Pride events zouden mogen komen en dat drag niets voor kinderen is. Some of them are in very inappropriate clothing or very little clothing at all. Dancing inappropriately, swinging from swings attached to the ceilings. Singing they're not very... doing that in public libraries, are they? In public libraries, let's be honest, they're reading, they're reading children's books to kids in a library. Mm -hmm. That's not, maybe like at night time there's some more risque stuff that goes on, but in the, in the, in the day, What is is that sexy? Kind of, you know, is that is that a worry? Reading books in a library is that? Tell me, you what you think about it? I mean, we were uh, on the topic of dragon. Like during the day, we are seeing this stuff happen in front of kids. Um, we're seeing a lot of targeting of children, not only in public spaces with like child-friendly drag shows. I say that with full quotes because they they are sexual in nature, and children should not be there. Do you ever think we need to turn the language down, or, or is that something you've decided that that is important? I think this organization um, has made it abundantly clear that we need to use the language that's going to make people uncomfortable because we need to get this message out there. People aren't going to listen until you kind of have to shock them. Like when we're talking about children transitioning, we use the words child mutilation because people go, whoa, that's a, it's a very big, it's a big word. Trans people would say that that's very transphobic. What would you say to them? Children should be allowed to figure out who they are. A child can't get a tattoo. A child cannot join the military. They can't even drive a car. And if they can't even do these things, why should a 13-year-old be given the right to have a double mastectomy, something that you can't reverse? So you're a proud gay woman, mm -hmm. but you don't want the pride flag in schools? No. I could, there's a, to me, there's, I, a, dis, there's yeah. a disconnect there, but, but, but talk me through it. So children do not need to be worrying about their sexualities. They go to school to get an education, you know. It's not a teacher's place to teach their students about sexualities and transgender and this and that. At the end of the day, the goal is to see children protected. It's to see kids being able to be kids again. The one, the only, Miss Fantasia Bordeaux! In een kleine gay bar in Memphis ontmoeten we Fantasia Bordeaux. Ze is een veterane in het vak en staat intussen al 30 jaar op het podium. This is an art form where you can express anything that you want to. It's always been an artistic outlet for me. I've enjoyed being able to bring some of the things I've only dreamt about to life. Fantasia, you look amazing. Hey, how are you? I'm Thanks good. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm a little nervous. No, really? Fantasia is drag artist en transvrouw. Ze voelt hoe het klimaat tegenover haar kunstvorm en haar identiteit veranderd is. Do you think it's a difficult time for trans women in the South of America? Do you think it's a safe place? Uh, at the moment, no. You know, with the bills that have come through, inciting a lot of hate and violence, putting us under the microscope for people just to analyze who we are, how we live, you know. We're trying to have a normal existence. We want to just live, thrive, and exist like every other normal individual. Everything's questionable now, you know. What other rights are they going to try to take away? To try to speak to younger LGBTQ individuals. It's kind of sad because you almost cannot assure them of better days. Tammy is beroemd in deze buurt. Ze is de manager van Drew's Place. Al 15 jaar een populaire homobar in Memphis. Sinds de haatmisdrijven tegen homo's toenemen, staan er gewapende veiligheidsagenten bij de deur. You've had to kind of up security in the last few years. We did that as a result of the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando. 
that's when we made a lot of changes. We end up, we hired a security service, uh, so we have armed security, uh, especially on the weekend nights. There's so many guns in America. It is, it's it's so beyond ridiculous, and that's coming from someone. I'm a gun owner, and um, but there, it's just it's so out of control, and you know something's got to be done about that, but. <laughs> I don't know if it's ever going to happen, honestly. But for now, you need your armed guards on the on the, yeah on the bar. Yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't do me any good to have an unarmed guard. Um, you know, if something did happen, all it would do is get them killed. So because the other person's going to have a gun. It's a very sobering thought. Yeah, it is. De volgende dag gaan we praten met een paar queer vrienden van Fantasia. Ze wil dat we horen welke impact de anti-dragwet op hen heeft. The reason I'm with this group of individuals here is because they personify being vigilant and not afraid. Fantasia en haar vrienden lijken constant gespannen. Het gesprek is amper begonnen of Moth begint zich al onveilig te voelen. Um, I'm just going to check the door. Just to, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Sure. Sorry, I'm having a lot of trouble focusing. You're good. Yeah, sure. You're just worried this, that it's that it's not locked, right? And do you feel less safe since since this bill has come in? Yeah, I think so. I think it is a lot less safe in general because now you have people who are actively targeting and looking for reasons to become reactive. I'm getting threats online of people to lots of people call me sick or mentally ill, you know, the groomer slur. De wetgevers in Tennessee beweren dat ze met het dragverbod geen groepen in het bijzonder viseren. Maar volgens transvrouw Jenna zit er een ruimere anti-trans agenda achter. You know, because I present feminine as a woman, are they going to arrest me walking down the street and try to label me as a female impersonator instead of a trans woman? Um, and so they're they're using the drag community to push their agenda and to attack um, the trans community. Ze zijn duidelijk ongerust. In een strijd om hun rechten rekenen ze niet alleen op hun eigen gemeenschap. We need the support of the entire community, not just the LGBTQ+. We need voices as loud as, you know, they can go so that we can tell these legislators that, you know, we're not going to let it go down like that. We've been here for a couple of weeks now and actually, interestingly, everybody we've spoken to, whichever the camp they're in, feels the same in a way. They feel like they're not being listened to, that their rights are being chipped away at. And you get the sense that neither side is backing down, which makes it hard to see where this is going. But also you get the feeling that this is way bigger than just the drag band. This is about people trying to be themselves. And for some people, that just feels impossible.